Welcome back. I'm MTG Joe, and we're continuing our series of rotation proof decks, i.e., example decks that you won't lose out on all your wild cards if you craft them right now. With the upcoming rotation coming in September, I believe, uh, these sets of Dominaria, Ixalan, MN, and M19 will all be rotating out of standard, meaning you can no longer play them in standard. Um, so all that'll be left in standard will be both the Ravnica sets, uh, War of the Spark, and uh, M20, plus whatever new cards we get from the fall set. So what I'm doing is putting together a bunch of lists that you can play now without fear of losing the cards in a couple months. Um, so we've already done a black-white kind of life gain or life as a resource deck. Uh, it was a bit more of a mid-range deck. I had some pri uh, Johnny's Pride Mates. Uh, Soren, some Planeswalkers in there, Dreadhorde Invasion. So that video is already up. I'll continue doing these um, for a couple of the color pairs or general themes. Uh, if you have any requests, anything you'd like to see, do drop a comment below. Um, trying to do this for as many as I can before rotation comes, just so people don't waste wild cards on stuff that's going to be only a narrow shelf life. Part of the reason why I'm not playing Scape Shift. I just don't want to spend those mythic wild cards. Uh, in any case, let's get to the deck in question today. So we are playing a Golgari or green-black uh, Graveyard Matters kind of reanimator deck. Uh, so this has kind of been referred to as Blood Hulk um, in a couple iterations. Um, basically around two cards. Blood for Bones, uh, you sacrifice a creature to return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield and then you return another creature to your hand, and then you have Mulder Hulk, which costs l one less for each creature in your graveyard. Um, and So you basically want to try to cast for two mana. With the added bonus, you get to return a land to your graveyard. Um, so what we're trying to do in this deck is get a bunch of creatures in our graveyard, and then reanimate a Lotless Giant to deal one damage to our opponent for each creature in the graveyard. Um, so one of the main cards we're losing out is Stitcher Supplier. It's the one mana... Uh, let me just show you, where are you, our little one mana, there we go. So Stitcher Supplier is a good card from M19, it's used in a lot of dredge strategies or self-mill. When it enters the battlefield, you mill three into your graveyard, and then when it dies, you put another three cards. So this is a really good enabler to the deck. So we are playing a combination of Glowspore Shaman, which will put three cards into the graveyard, and Gorging Vulture which will put four cards, but you gain one life for each creature put into the graveyard. So we'll see how that plays out. Um, we also lose Llanowar Elves. Um, so we're using Paradise Druid as our early ramp spell. We have some Assassin's Trophy as uh, basically catch-all removal. can also hit land. So again, Scape Shift, we can hit their zombie land. Uh, so we have the Gorging Vultures, we have some Midnight Reapers, we want our creatures to die, so might as well draw cards off it. Plague Crafter to deal with like Planeswalkers and other opponents' creatures. Um, Golgari Fine Broker to get back some of our stuff. Uh, the Blood for Bones, which I mentioned. Golgar, uh, Golgari Queen Vraska, uh, so we can use her to sack our creatures to draw cards as general removal, and then... You don't really use the uh, ultimate that often, but it is a pressure point. And then we have Lotless Giant and Mulder Hulk. Uh, the mana base is going to be four Overgrown Tombs. Um, I'm just playing two Jungle Hollows right now because I don't have the four Temples. Um, so I'm just holding off spending the wild cards right now until I decide which is my go-to. Um, also, it would be interesting to see what the dual land cycle is from the new set. I've usually like two temples, like in my Saltai version, so I play two Temple of Mystery, two Temple of Malady. I usually don't like going too heavy on those, but we'll see how it goes. And then our sideboard, let me just flip the view so it's easier to see. Uh, Veil of Summer against your Esper Counterspell Flash decks. Uh, we have Noxious Grasp against uh, green and white stuff, uh, Creatures and Planeswalkers, uh, Vivian's Arcbow, uh, we can discard a card and then pay X, so this is a way we can put stuff in our graveyard to get back later and play around counter spells. Brontodon for like the Nexus matchup. Uh, even against like Burner stuff, it's a good body to block. Um, Shifting Ceratops versus the blue decks or Teferi decks. A Masker Girl as a board wipe and Crawl Foragers when we need to gain some life. 
So I'm going to run it through some ranked matches. Uh, we made it to Platinum off Sultai Flash. Um, so now we'll play at that tier. And we'll see how it goes. Um, so I'll be writing up my articles uh, once I do a couple of these uh, in full detail, explaining my thought process a little bit more on Aetherhub. I am officially a content creator there. Um, if you are considering purchasing any cards from TCG Player, my affiliate link is in the video description down below. If you can, just click through the link. It's no additional cost to you. It just uh, directs them and lets them know that I sent you to TCG. Um, it'd be greatly appreciated. It's a free way you can support the channel. And as always, if you can, uh, hit that subscribe button. It costs you nothing, and it's another way to support the channel. All right, so let's get started. Um, gonna mulligan this. Gonna mulligan this. Okay, you know what? Let's just... I want to demo the deck properly, so let's just restart this. We're at the lowest rank anyway, so there's no loss. I want to use this more as, like, instructional as opposed to, like, grinding. I was a li little bit more hesitant to play uh, uh, some brews on traditional rank because I was going back and forth. I needed one win from gold one to platinum, and I kept... Winning one, losing one, and just going back and forth. Finally got it this morning, so I'm happy. Playing Miso 0222. Play first. Alright, so this hands a lot better. We can go hollow on one. Druid into Vulture. And then we have Play Crafter that we can get back with uh, Fine Broker if need be. So, could be Mono Red. Could be Gruel. Uh, it's Mono Red. Oh, Feather. Um, here. I'm just gonna play crafter. If this is an Arcanist strategy, then or um like a feather strategy, keeping creatures off the board is the best way. Oh, wizards. Okay, so a little worse, especially if they have a shock here. They can hit our druid, and it sets us back mana wise. Okay, so we misjudged the matchup here. That was an awful flip. <laughs> and this only gets permanence back. So that really screwed us up. So a card that we can be playing too in this deck is like Crawl Harpooner. Um, need to try that out. There's also the Black Cavalier, which might be good. Uh, again, it's really just trial and error with this deck. We are playing half the format's worth of cards. It's still good to kill this because they would have started rebuying shocks and ops. So we get blown out by a spell pierce here. Let's see if they have dive down. Okay, they don't. Okay, so they have an Adelie's. Adelie's will take out the Vraska. Don't be surprised if we meet again. Okay, so Mulderhawk still a while away. Um, for now, I think I'm just going to find Broker back the Vraska. One card we also lose that's probably a little overlooked is Memorial to Folly. Uh, it's the land that you can bring creatures back. With Mulder Hulk, it's a nice combination. Okay, 
You can keep sacking it, bringing it back. Um, I think we want like a Mulder Hulk or something. Let's see if they have Wizard's Retort. Yeah, they have the Spell Pierce. So there was a play to get Plague Crafter back, but that didn't play around another creature. Um, we can just go Gorging Raptor next turn, or Vulture. Be great if we can draw two lands, or sorry, a land so we can play both. Awesome. So hopefully this gains us some life. Okay, we gain one. It sucks that we've hit like all our sorcery spells and everything. I'm just gonna tell the dog to start barking. One sec. My guards, my dog's on guard duty. So they likely have a spell to prowess here. So we'll get at least one card draw. Okay, so we have blood for bones here. So... Can't play both, but we can play around Spell Pierce. Um, so here, let's try this out. We kind of get blown out. At the okay, so we do get it back, so. This is creature to enter the battlefield. Let's do Plague Crafter. And then creature for our hand. Probably. Do we want a vulture again? Gains us life. And it can block the flyers. So we clear their board. We're in a pretty good spot. Okay, so they have Kefnet. That's actually pretty solid. They get in for a big attack here. Okay, so we have Blood for Bones again. So we do have the Lotlith Giant. Uh, we'll just temple a malady here, get a scry. We don't want lands. So this will allow us to block. And then we can smash in. We have the Lotlith Giant. Which can almost burn him out on its own. Okay, so they play the Adelies. This is a wiz. No, it's not a wizard. Um, let's just go for this. Sweet, got him. Um, so in this matchup. Green or white doesn't really do much, so the Ceratops is probably good. Pro blue. Um, I don't know if they're going to be bringing in too many creature counters. Maybe just the Foragers to help win the race. Um, they're likely going to bring in some more protection. So we got five cards to cut. Vrasco is good. Probably get rid of the fine brokers, they're a little slow. Shave down a blood for bones. Plague Crafter was fine. Midnight Reaper was fine. Could probably go down. 
a giant. Maybe just two giants. I think we just win the grindy matchup here. Play it out. All right, so we'll keep this. So I'll likely have an opter or shock here. If we do have untapped land, we can go Vraska turn three. Might be a tougher matchup on the draw. They got the opt value. No blocks. So here. Ah, they just drew the spell pierce. Okay, well. Let's go for the ramp plan. Actually, I'm probably going to go Glow Spore Shaman. It can block the Arcanist or the Augur and trade. I don't want the lens. Do they have a shock? They go after the Paradise Druid. Uh, well, the Arcanist can flash this back, get rid of the Glow Spore Shaman. We're a little bit far behind on this one. With them having the Spell Pierce. Probably need some disfigure maybe, but even disfigure doesn't really deal with this board state. They shock our glow spore. So their clock's not too aggressive right now, but Their board control is pretty great. So we'll just play Ceratops out here. At least it's a blocker. Might be a way for us to try to trade with the Arcanist. So they have the Kefnet. Don't really have a clean answer. Ooh. We didn't have a clean answer. I uh, just need to keep... No, I can't do that. I need Spell Pierce mana up. Oh, they don't have... So they don't have Spell Pierce right now. So we can go Vraska, get rid of the Arcanist. Give our guy Reach. And block the Kefnet. Yeah, let's do that. Gives us an opening here. Go ahead. Kind of forces them into... Attacking here. It also gets the blockers out of the way, so if we want to start attacking in, we can. We'll see what they draw. If they attack with everything, I'm more... Uh, no, I still want to block the Kefnet. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, so let's give this reach. What do you got? Multiple shocks. Okay, so they threw away their best creature in this matchup, probably. Okay, so they have another Arcanist. Um, I want them to spend the mana on their turn. And we're still short, so the thing is I can't Vulture and hold up spell peer you can play around spell peers so let's do this on their upkeep So we're going to get them to, sh if they want the land, they have to shuffle their library, so it moves the Kefnet further down. See what they do here. So they take it there. Sorry about that. So they have Adelaide's Adelie's can block it still. Uh, so they have the lava coil. They got us there. Blocks. So they're gonna. Uh, let's just gain some life. Hopefully, or just mill all our lands. It's also something. <laughs> Only four, so he probably fell too far behind in this one. So we can just Lock one of these, take one. Um, well, we can play defensive, hopefully. Again, if we stop milling all our lands, it'd be good. Uh, do we need a land here? Probably decline. No attacks. So they had the shock 
and they got it off Kefnet, so yeah, we lost this one. So... We might want Massacre Girl to catch up. And go down... What do we go down? Hulk's big. But I think we need to play more of a grind em out game. Let's try like that. Their cheap spells are what make it a little difficult. And the fact are... Like, cast down would be great for this deck out of the side, but we lose that with the rotation. Alright, let's see what how we're doing. Playing first should help. Okay, we got a lot of early removal. Keep this hand. Trophy does ramp them, so... Kind of want to save that unless we absolutely need it. Uh, getting a little heavy on lands. Here I'm okay to trade one for one. They can play out the Adelies, but... Okay. Okay, so they have the Crawl Forager. Can play around Spell Pierce. Just do that, probably. Take the two. I want to be able to play Ceratops as well as use Reach. I want to try to get some more value for the Forager as well. This does ramp them, which is a little unfortunate. They have like an auger or an arcanist now, they get to play both. Oh, they had the land anyways. So they get the opt. Would really love to stop drawing lines. So we'll just pass turn. We can block where needed. It's one of those cards that might have randomly been stamped with reach. Uh, they have a lava coil. The unfortunate thing there too is it's exile. Mujang. I've yet to actually play her against this, so curious to see how this works. Uh, not really that good. Can try to pressure into something. Um, 
Malady doesn't really help. Shaman kind of mills us, so it's probably good. What do you do? You just make it... Uh, you can't even attack in. Uh, no attacks, just end the turn. It's getting like no value here. So they got their flyer. Hopefully hit some creatures. Um, decline that. So we get blown out by spell pierce here, but I think we have to attempt at the very least to go for it. Yeah. Alright, they got us. Run it back for another one. We'll play first. Yeah, my hand seems fine. Just play this tapped. Just pass turn. So this can be Salty Flash. Let's just play Vulture. Pretty solid flip. So we got the Mulder Hawk that we can get back, hopefully. Uh, Salty Control. Oh, this is, uh, what is this? This could be command. Oh, it's just salt control. So here, I'm going to attack the opponent. Plague crafter, keep plague crafter. Ah, uh, I'm an idiot. I am an idiot. Tamio's passive ability doesn't let you do that. I am not smart. So this might be like Jeff Hoogland's list that he was playing a bit. Um, we can just kill Tamio here. My research has been compromised. 
play glow spar. I don't think we want lands. Just end the turn. So we can get back Mulder Hulk or we can get back Vulture with the Fine Broker. I'm more inclined to Vulture because. So they might play Ritualist Soot, but it's unlikely they play something that can get rid of both. Wilderness Wreck. I want to put a stop there before their end step so they don't get the untap. So we're doing that so they don't get the untap and they can't play uh, Chemister's Insight. So we have some good pressure. We're getting a pretty big Hulk as or a Giant as well. We can actually just set it up, so that's lethal. Yeah, let's go Glow Spore. This way our board is lethal. We put a land on top, guarantee. We set up the giant next turn and we can either kill him with our board or kill him with the giant if they somehow wipe our board. See if they have Root Snare. Of course they have Root Snare. Um... So they can also Tamio it back, which is a little annoying. So let's get him to keep doing that. And then we can just hold this back. I want to start trying to kill some stuff. Boys Nexus. The past is never they get back Reclamation. They have the Root Snare. We probably never get a turn again. And Druid doesn't do enough. So if they show one more Nexus, or like a search, then... They got us. So they have the Spiral. Uh, 
and they blink plague crafter. Uh, I guess just to draw a card. Let us see if your talents are worth cataloging. Puts another card into our graveyard with Plague Crafter at least. So they get back Root Snare. Okay, well that puts another creature in the grave. They pretty much have this, but we're not like... This is the problem with Nexus. We're not... Okay, now we're pretty much dead. Yeah, now we're dead. Once, like, they have the search and Tamiyo, it's pretty much locked that they have it. Um, so in this matchup, we want to apply Pressure, Ceratops, um, yeah, we want the Noxious Grasps, we need to get rid of their Planeswalkers. Midnight Reaper is not as meaningful in this matchup. Fine Brokers aren't, Frascas aren't, Plight Crafters aren't. Just play Midnight Reaper instead. Go like that. I can't wait till Nexus rotates. It's such an awful deck to play against. Like I'm I love combo. But like show me the Splinter Twin combo. Don't make me play like this hand's Maybe too slow. Probably should have mulled. Need some lands. At least I don't have an opt turn one. Probably a growth. Probably gonna hold off doing the search. I don't want to give him four mana next turn. Be honest, wilderness reclamation's probably worse. That we should probably get rid of that. Uh, they did bin their second search though. Um. Yeah, let's just do this. Wow, Veil of Summer. That is very niche against our deck. Reclamation me. Uh -oh, we do have 10 power. Haste. Immediately run into Root Snare. Followed by Tamio. Get back Root Snare. Okay, well, we might have a chance. Or we just might never get a turn again.
They don't have enough to insight and reclamation. Drawn from dreams is like basically dig through time in this deck. Okay. Well, what do you got? Root snare. At least they can't chemisters, but they probably have like a growth spiral or something. Like, again, this is the part where it's... We're probably dead, but they the fact we have 10 power and them at 10 life gives us pause. So they can flip a Scanta off the most value possible. Uh, I'd play Mono Red a thousand times before I play Nexus. Or against, yeah, there's Tamio. Name your Nexus of Fate. Ah, uh, so. I follow the tracks of the wise. Fogs them another turn. Well, now they're just gonna have a ton of mana. So, if they show a Nexus here, I'm gonna concede. Just auto pass. Why can't I auto pass? I don't want to deal with your triggers. It's even worse on Arena where everything's manual tap. At least in paper, you can just say, like, f float this. Alright, well, let's value our time a little bit more. Alright, so that was the deck. It's okay. I think uh, it's lacking a little just in terms of explosiveness. Maybe Nisa is a way to play around, something we can explore. Um, but we'll continue pumping out these rotation proof decks just so you get a feel. Um, if you do enjoy the content, make sure to subscribe. And have a great one.